New England Candle Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candle Pin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. Visit ryanfamily.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching. From Ryan Family Mutants in Millis, Massachusetts, it's New England Candle Pins. In our third Sweet 16 show, newcomer Brian Crow is set to take on Sean Taylor. And then in game two, Nick Norcross faces off against Brian Heffern. Now let's roll with your hosts, Richie Myrick and Dave Chestercove. Welcome to New England Candle Pins. I'm here with Brian Kroll, our number 13 seed. Uh, Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, I only have uh, two questions for you. Are you ready to rock? Yeah, I am. I feel good. This guy's a Pro Series champion and a great bowler. I have one other question for you, Brian. Does pineapple belong on a pizza? I like pineapple on pizza. <laughs> he likes pineapple on a pizza, and that makes two of us DCs. That's three? No, uh, that's a negative. All right. So we'll talk to Sean Taylor then. <laughs> Thank you, Richie. Sean, our number four seed for this show. Uh, no stranger to New England candle pins. Uh, I have two questions first. How are you feeling? Excellent. Can't wait to bowl. And how you've been bowling? Actually, very well. I've, I've stepped it up this year and I increased my average by a couple pins, so I'm feeling good. Alrighty, excellent. Short and sweet interviews, just the way we like it here on New England Candlepins. And we'll get right to the action right after this. Pineapple on a pizza. Welcome to New England Candle Pins for our third show of our Sweet 16 round. We got Brian Kroll at 13 seed facing off against Sean Taylor. And to my right is Mike Kustak. And to his right is our good fellow friendly face, Richie Myrick. Uh, not so friendly. And to my right is... Water bottle. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's let's do this. All righty, so Brian. On, on lane one, we have Brian Crowell. Crowell is our 13 seed. And DC, if I'm not mistaken, he's a newcomer to the show. He is. He is certainly no newcomer to uh, the Canopin uh, Arena. No, that's but for sure. But he is a, technically a rookie for our show. Well, we always like to see new faces around here. Even if they might be old faces to us. I mean, Brian's a fantastic bowler. He's got a couple of at least Pro Series titles. At I least think so. so. He's wearing his Channel 5 shirt here, so uh, definitely he was on the old show. So he's been behind the camera before, and he starts with a 10 box. Give himself a spare leave in the first box, see if he can do the same thing as he moves over to lane two. So DC, since he's a new member to the show, I believe his career average is now officially 10. <laughs> now we'll make that 14. He's got a really tough one here. It's inside. only going to go up. <laughs> one would hope. A lot of pins, but makeable spare right here. Puts the good bid on it. Now, Brian, he has a high single of 196. High, high triple, tri 456, Dave. That's, that's some pretty good bowling. Well, let's see if what Sean can do. Get the door open now. See if he can get out to that big lead like we've seen in some of the previous weeks. The guy that usually is getting out there with a mark and that quick 10, 15 pin lead hasn't really ever interested. it. Get that good start. It puts all the pressure on the other opponent. Now, Sean Taylor, we we go back a ways. DC knows. Oh, will 
really get really get the break. Clearly off right here in the first box. You can still get out of this though with a healthy box and then come over to lane two and see what happens. Yep. And he does just that. Yeah, they say the first one's a warm up box, you know. I mean, I've seen fir worse first balls on the show previously. <laughs> that, that is true. I mean. Thankfully, it didn't involve me. Uh, as far as you know. Sean, <laughs> <laughs> right back in the pocket. Leaves the three, seven, ten. Couple pieces of wood out there. A lot of help. Gives it a chance to go inside or out. Oh, oh just a little full. Yeah, Heck of a bit, though. Not by much at all. Checks out for Tsen. Takes an early one pin lead through two. I think Brian here in the third is going to go right at it in the head pin. I can just see it happening. I think he's going to get in the zone. These two boxes. Oh, you called it, Stax. With a strike for Brian. Beautiful ball right in the pocket. Beautiful ball and a beautiful call. Kustak in the house. Tapping into his crystal ball over there. Crystal ball, what a call. We got rhymes for days around here on New England candle pins. Is it two? Oh, oh, you wanted it to be two. Well, he's he's, he's going to be glad that wood kicked out enough. It's going to help uh, convert the shot. All too often, you see that wood, guys, right on that six pin. It almost makes it impossible to get to. And depending on the house, sometimes you put the channel, you know, sometimes that's why it will settle in or it will just stay there because if it's more flat. He can go right in between the four and the five. It's gone like one. Oh. Oh, wow. wow. A little bit too oh. much of the cap, I think, yep. fellas. Tough break, but still it's still would good... go, you'd think, you know, four or five out of, you know, four out of five times. He I'm put the good say. offer on it, sure. Yeah, heck of a ball. Like, it's 19 for the box, nine more, 28 in those two. So I think, like we said, we've seen all these other matches. Yeah, it's a good trip. You don't want Sean to go uh, open right here and, and start going behind too early. We hit through four. This ball by Sean Taylor, leaving the seven pin. Could have easily been all of them. It's a one one string match, and you guys are used to bowling two, two boxes at a time. As Taylor picks that up. Makes it look easy. Answers the mark put up by Brian. In a situation like this in a one-string match, do you prefer to bowl first or second? That's a heck of a question. Um, I, I, I like to think where, how I'm bowling, it, but you can't, that's the thing is, it's funny, Richie, because it's a great question. You can't forget. Nice uh, eight, maybe nine Smashed pin drop. Smashed eight there. If you maybe nine, the maybe lead, ten. Like I thought against John, you think it is, but then the other guy comes back with two. You only got one, okay, and now that it can just flip that quick. Sometimes I actually think, you know, maybe second then, because I, I don't know if the guy will right away get on it. I, I have the confidence in myself that I would think I'm going to come out with at least one out of two. Ten box for Sean. What about you, Dave? Honestly, it doesn't doesn't matter to me. See, that doesn't surprise me with that answer. Uh, yeah. I, I got to bowl my game no matter what. Sure. You know, I like, a, like you know me, like, I, I came from the uh, Mike Morgan school where you, you just don't watch the bowl. And then I don't. Because... Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might see, you know, uh, the guy kind of throw a, you know, a throw ball that's not on the head, and he ball, like a wayward break. ball, and then sure. he gets a big break, or maybe he misses a spare altogether, but he gets gets a break, and then they kind of might eat at you a little bit. I just assume not watch, and just do do my thing. And if the because other guy beats my score, then congratulations. Four horsemen but, for Kyle. Just on the quarter pin. Yeah, what can you control? You, yeah. know, aside, you know, you know, you can you know. control your own ball, so you might as well focus on your own ball. I tend to agree with that. Yeah, so I don't. I tend to like the bull second. I like to know what I have to have, and and in a in in a position where if I know I need two marks, I'd I'd like to know that I need it. That's right. just me, though. You know, so yep. you know, everybody's. I like to bowl under pressure. That's just me, but. It is. A, it, it's an interesting thing. It's almost like having the uh, the honors in golf. You have to. Hit one fur, you know, you yeah. you had the best hole, and you have to throw first, or you have to, uh, you know, hit your shot first, then you put one in the rough, all of a sudden, your opponent's chomping at the bit, yeah, or vice I, versa, if I you played, put one uh, in the fairway. Yeah, I played uh, I played high school golf, and we always had match play matches. Mm -hmm. 
just like in the Ryder Cup and President's Cup. Nice. And um, I, I, to be honest, I always preferred to hit. When I was at my home course, I preferred to have the honors because I know the course. Mm -hmm. And I'll just put it where I want it to go and good luck to the other guy. <laughs> you know? But, uh, you know, everybody's different. Every sport's a little different. I guess. That's, I guess that's what we're going with. The mindset is very important in this type of situation. You have to know, you know, you have to know where your position is at all times, whether you're bowling first or second. Seven box there. Tough seven box as well. We put three good balls on it. Shot could get a mark here. He could really start taking a little bit of control mm -hmm. of the match. Yep. Currently has a two pin lead. Yep, two and against two opens. Check mark to the right. Three, five, six, ten. All in a cluster though. One side or the other, give it a chance. Buries oh, it. Buried it shot. like one. I would say that's a chance. Huge box there for Sean. If he can cross yeah. over and yes. get a decent fill and another mark, really will put the pressure on Crowell Comp in the seventh and eighth. Oh boy. Oh, will he trip the three pin with it? No, oh, he tripped the seven. seven. Wait a second. Yep. Will it come Thinking back about and it. touch the three? Watch this. Oh, watch it's going to turn into a wire job if it touches the three. Is it going to get there? Oh, goodness it, me. It's, it's almost close Look enough. Look at that. Close enough, correct. If you can get the inside or the outside. That, the ball, just plow we'll that three pin right in, the, right in the face and it goes like one. Yes, and it there it is. Beautiful shot by Sean Taylor. All right. That's Sean did exactly what he wanted to do. Yes, he did. Putting the screws to him. He's up 14 plus much. a ball. I think he puts it in the pocket right here. I think so, too. He's a clutch ball. We've seen it before. See what the break does, but I think he puts it on it. Now we'll see what the break does, all right. Well, it would be nice. Not. Not really. I think well, it's too deep to use, fellas. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're just going to play like the uh, nine pin eight there, try to cut the five over. We have seen a lot of wall action, though. He might be able, if he if he plays it almost right at the at the nine pin. Ooh, Ooh. he was trying. He, yep, he was going full cut right there. Doesn't surprise me. Bowler of his caliber. Take your sticks. And that he does. He does. Puts him at 72 through seven. Well, we've seen in the previous week, so you don't want to predict anything and be like that, but it's all honestly, I think he's going to need a mark here. I really do think he's going to need the mark, seeing as Sean's already gone back to back. Yeah, you kind of do get that, that feel. Oh, oh, fantastic there he goes. Ball. He's got a great lead. Look at us, Bear. Left of that ribbon, everything should be fine. Must make here. Right at it. Never a doubt. No problem. Well, he, Brian got his mark. It's going to make Sean fill when he gets up here now. Great ball by Taylor. Leaves the four pin. Clutch fill opposite the mark, waste no time picking no, that up. Yeah, I was no. wondering that myself, Richie. Interesting you said that. I was thinking that too. He wasted no time, but he did bury it. That's his third in a row. John seems to have uh, found a rhythm for himself. Hasn't left the pin standing yet, and all the spare fills are nine. Yeah, he's just nine. smashing the pocket and he's right now. Continuing that trend. A little funky wood here. Don't get too cute with it. You can see the pin too, but uh, he's at it. Oh, no. there he All goes. over it. Nice shot. Great balling by Sean Taylor. Has a stranglehold on this match. Really going to force Brian into. Uh, it's at least a nine drop situation. You really want at least eight or nine. Either way, Mark out. Good yep. ball, and go he gets six. You never know if you cross over to lane two and throw a double. Yep. Just go make this sure. and see. See what the score is at the end. That's right. And you know Crow, he's not gonna, he's not gonna give up right here. It's liable to make this one. What a bit. Yeah, oh, boy. Yeah, you call you. See what he does. Give it a chance right here up top again. That's right. Ask see the what question. Happens. Or 
a strike right here. Sometimes you get the answer if you ask the question. How about that? Great piece, but 17, I don't, I don't think that's going to be just enough. He's going to have to fade a couple of, uh, couple of boxes, especially this fill. But first he has to make this. Uh, no, way to keep grinding. I don't think it's going to be enough. Sean's well ahead, but way to keep plugging. Give yeah, Sean's well shot. in the zone. As Dave said, uh, he hasn't hasn't left a pin up. And if he doesn't leave a pin up. If Sean can throw a five fill here and you know, seal the deal when he gets up there. And essentially. Yeah. what Brian yep. does. Credit to Crow, though. Yeah, way to keep grinding up there for sure. Absolutely. You don't see many 121s loose. No, you don't. Not on, uh, not on our show. No. Nope. Strength matches. Credit to uh, Sean and uh, how well he's been bowling mm -hmm. today so far. Yep. Five out of the last six have been marked for him. Uh, let's see him go nuts Look at this. here. Another nine, Phil. Fantastic. And a nice piece of wood right in front of that nine. Nothing but something to look at now. Right at it again, Richie. Fast pace. Just dialed in. Just yep. picking yes, it up is. and putting it right on it. We're going to get the high single for the last couple of weeks here. Yep. Let's see. Let's see. Up a is it 1-2 is it or 1-3 pocket strike right here? I was going to say 9-drop. Oh, oh, it was 1-2 uh, and it was a, a heck of a sweep. ball. Sweep. Hey, you might as well make it. Ribbon here, Richie and Dave. Play the ribbon. I like the ribbon maybe a little higher. Maybe a little higher. Sean's in the zone. He doesn't yeah, care. He was going clean. <laughs> All right, guys, now I'll sweep. Oh, yeah, of course. Excellent bowling. That'll be 150 game to 121. Some fantastic bowling from Sean Taylor and Brian Kroll. Waking up just a little bit too late, boys. Yeah, that run that yep. Sean went on, it was just something like we said when we saw it. I had a feeling he was going to go up there. Um, he just kept marking, getting the fills. And uh, like Richie said, just, just business-like approach. Came right up there. First ball, boom, take, take down eight or nine, and a lot of stretch there. And... Uh, just went right up and picked it. That's a perfect game for Sean Taylor as well. He didn't leave a pin standing, which is uh, something that you don't see very often. We're lucky to have one of those a season at, at uh, you know, their level, you know, these guys, you know. Yeah. So um, I think that's going to do it. You got any more, DC? No, that'll be Stacks, uh, that'll you got be something it. for us? Uh, no, we'll come back with the uh, post-game wrap-up and uh, interview the boys. Welcome back to New England Candle Pins. I'm here with your runner-up, Brian Kroll. Brian, you're too little too late, my friend. You were throwing an awesome ball those last few boxes, and uh, Sean Taylor just really bowled well. And uh, Man, if you had five more, though, I think you could have caught him. Yeah, maybe, but he was throwing a good ball. And uh, I missed a couple easy shots. That didn't help. So uh, he, did, he did well, did really well. Well, you did well as well. You don't see very much uh, 120s lose on, on this program. And uh, uh, for this, uh, we're going to give you a $75 check. And uh, we appreciate you joining the show. And we'll see you next time because this guy's an awesome bowler. Trust me when I tell you. DC, take it away. First off, congratulations, Sean, Thanks, on uh, winning your match here. And uh, I remember in the uh, interview here, you said you, uh, you made a good adjustments and uh, you were rolling a really good ball, and it clearly showed today. Yeah, it was very good. I mean, I. I uh, Filled my marks well, so you know, that's the name of the game there. Yeah, you're rolling a great ball. Now, uh, looking to carry that over to the next match. And uh, we'll see you guys after this for our next round of bowlers. Welcome to New England Candle Pins. I'm here with my colleague, Dave Chester Cove, and I'm also here with this guy. His name's Nick Norcross, and he's a World Candlepin champion. Oh, Hi, you're, yeah, yeah, you're laughing. You're laughing. <laughs> he's also a dear friend of mine. Welcome to the show, Nick. You're the number one seed overall. He's been on the show a few times. You may be familiar with him. How you been tossing the ball, and are you ready to go today? I'm ready to go, and I've been bowling pretty good. I feel pretty good, so hope it carries over to today. That's awesome. A man of few words, but don't take him uh, for granted. DC, tell us a little bit about Hef. Now Brian Heffernan here, he's he, he just snuck in as the 16th seed, but I, I can assure you he's he's not afraid of 
afraid of this guy, right? No, no, not at all. Excellent, excellent. So how you feeling? Feeling good, nice and loose, you know, been bowling well, so. Excellent. Today. Excellent. And that's it. We'll be, you'll see these guys up next in just a moment. Welcome back to New England Candle Pins. Brian Heffernan is on lane one. He's ready to rock. Brian, go for it. All righty. Mystery ball. One mulligan throw. Game's too easy for Brian. <laughs> he wants to make it a challenge. Ooh, good second ball, drop seven. See if we can clean this up for a nine or 10 bucks here. That's a good nine. Oh, it is. I know Brian real well. I bowl in a few leagues with him. Does he do that often? No. No, I was <laughs> just checking. Well, I'm sure he throws nine boxes every once in a while. It's no, I, oh, yeah. pretty free no, I, I, Fair enough. But starting with I a mean, gutter. I mean, come on, DC. <laughs> starting with a gutter. Oh, I didn't see that. Settle wood. Well, <laughs> he's got the six and the seven. He's got two pieces of wood. There's one up top right on the lip. And there's one in the back right on the six pin. I think you might want to try it right on the six. Ooh, yeah. the ball almost bounced into the seven. Let's see if we can clean this up for 10 bucks. Brian bowls out of Timberlane. He's a 110 average with a 186 triple and a four high, uh, 416, a 186 single, pardon me, and a 416 high triple. So he's got a pair of nines in the book, and that'll bring us to Nick Norcross. Rob, tell us a little bit more about Nicky. Uh, he's a, he has a 123 average. He uh, has high singles, a two, 210, and he's got a four triple, I mean 472 high. Trip. Those are pretty big numbers. They are. As I mentioned in the open, he uh, he and Academy Lanes won the World Candlepin Championship this past year at Academy Lanes. And he has the six seven as well. Let's see what he does with this. Ooh. Tried to clip the left side of the cap which is definitely the play on that one. Last season, I bowled Nick in the first matchup. And a 10 box for Nick. Takes an early pin lead. Nick has been on the show 14 times. He's got a seven and seven record. I'd say that's pretty even, wouldn't you guys? Yeah. Yep. Pretty 50-50, yeah. you know? Uh, he was a runner-up uh, in fall of 14. Nick off to the off the head pin to the right. Back right. in 2014, I think that would put Nick at approximately seven years old. <laughs> it's just about. Leaves the one, two, four. Oh, oh makes nice. It. Makes it right on the inside. Just kisses the head pin. And down they go. So Brian finds himself in a hole early. Brian back on the pocket, drops only five, leaves the cluster to the right. He's thrown a couple of good balls since that opener and not too much to show for it. Oh, ooh. Ooh. Nice rebound. Somehow takes out the parallel pins. That's an interesting one. Yeah, you don't see that too often. No. And another net. So Brian looking to find the pocket again and get a better result this time.
And he drops seven off that pin. Leaves the one, eight, nine. Piece of wood by the, by the nine pin. Might make the shot a little easier. There's also a piece of wood on the left-hand side. If he wants to get interesting, he might. Ooh. Ooh. It's kind of hard to tell if it's covering the head pin, but I think you guys know what I'm talking about. If you right. can get on the red line or maybe a little bit deeper. Bounced it right off that foul line. And a 10 box for Brian. So Nikki Norcross with a two pin advantage plus a plus is still right here. Looking up, looking up, build a big lead early in this match. Off the head pin, but he gets a great break. He's going to love that. He's got the 1-8, and there's wood that uh, looks like it's only going to help him at this point. If he could just find that head pin. Wood Should in be front able of both pins. Right oh. Yeah. Yeah, he'll be a little upset with that effort. Wild pitch. At any rate, it's a good fill. Yeah. Ooh. See, that would even upset me more, guys. You know, yep, uh, you know, I missing agree. the spare is one thing, but you know you need those two pins when you get a break like that. Find a couple of curtains, not the sound you like to hear. Yeah, no. Yeah. Looking to rebound, rebound on lane two. Ooh. It's not exactly the rebound ball that he was looking for, <laughs> but he's got it. sounds like Jay. I'm really? feeling informed yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's the, it, it must be the chair. <laughs> must Let's blame be. It on the chair. Must be. It's got the four horsemen left with the eight and the ten. Just can't seem to find that leader at the moment. Yep. But I'll tell you what, if you still have the lead when you're throwing a wayward ball, it's a pretty good feeling, I suppose. Yeah, he gets the ten. Yep, that's a good ten. Make, makes a big ten. So he still has a nine pin lead, I believe. Yep, I've got it at nine, and uh, here comes Heffernan. I got a feel. I got a feeling right here. I got a feeling. I think Brian's gonna hit the board right here. He's been on the head pin since. Uh, yeah. He's come around. Since really that first box. On the head pin again, boy. Man, he can't get. Not. He can't get much to shoot at. Yeah. Cluster left. Two, four, five, seven, eight. No good. Which is no good. Oh, wait a minute. Get it to go. Oh. Right by it. Yeah, you walked the dog all the way across the street and it didn't click either one. Big pins. Still Found within the 10. sewer drain at the end of the sidewalk there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nine box. So Brian looking to keep rolling his good first ball and eventually, eventually the break's got to come, right? Oh, you tend to think so, DC. Ugh. Oh, tripped the Wait forward. a minute. All right, this is going to be a fun one. He's got the 2 3 6 10, but he's got wood right behind the 3 pin and another piece behind the 2. If he hits the 3 pin in the face, I think it's going to jump right over into that 2 pin. What do you guys think? I think, I, I, I think that's a fair assumption. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, you it goes, goes the other way. Brian's got some, uh, still has some homework to do on this ball. And an eight. So eight for Brian puts him at 54 through six. Nick Norcross is at 46. So Nicky's got a golden opportunity right here to really put a chokehold on this one. Indeed. Nick, after all, was our number one seed overall. Threw a, what did he throw? Is a, was it 4-16? I think so. Yeah. Oh, what a pretty ball, and they all go for a strike. Well, that's right on time. Yeah, you called it. Well, I, I didn't, but but uh, <laughs> Nicky did, because that was a great ball. But here's a fact about Nick Norcross. He's from Arlington, Mass., and Arlington is my middle name. 
No uh, kidding. Yeah. yeah. Check that out. Look yeah. it up. <laughs> And Nicky with the pitch out. He's glad he's got a second ball here. His misses have been to the left mm. so far, but he's gotten away with a lot of it. This is one of those times where you just want like an 18 or a 19 fill. Right. He's already got, he's already got a big deal. Yeah, see, even that's not too bad. That's, that's seven on top, so that puts him at uh, 63. So that gives him a 17 pin lead through completed boxes. Won't and lose any in count. Yep, again, it'll still eight, be 17. So. so that ain't too bad. Yeah, that forces I'll, your opponent. I'd be happy with that. Yes, yeah, so that yeah. forces your opponent to throw two big marks. Yes. You know? Two big marks just to pull it to really that's right. to, to, be, to be even. Yeah, that's a difficult position. Just to you get it close. Yep, you got to make the first one, which is tough enough. Then you got to guarantee yourself a big fill to give yourself a chance. So, Heffernan still has time, though. Oh, pretty ball. Splash Finally gets ball. a lead. Finally a break. Yep. Oh, no, that was going to. Is that we're going to be Ugh, precarious? Be That's precarious at best, I think. Oh, you almost got to be right tip, right? I think so. Yeah, I, right at it. Good hey, shot. Right it. in the face. That's a good shot. That was no gimme there. Nope. I think he hit it a little above the red line around it. And the ball jumps up, takes out the pin. So Brian looking to keep his first ball on the pocket now. He's been this doing that most of the match. It's the biggest ball of the match right here. Got like a ball on the head pin. It's Sim another spare leave, though. Yeah, it's a, it's a similar leave to the one that he had on uh, lane one last time up. He's got the two, four, five, and seven. The check mark on the left hand side. Put it on the two pin. Give yourself a chance. No. Ooh. Everything but the seven. Gave himself a chance. Yep. Uh, he you know what Nicky does, he might bite into that lead. And a good 10 box. It is a good 10. He might remember that pin in a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's right. Now Norcross still in control. like a nice smooth ball very unlucky on the break see that five pin still wiggling he's got the five six seven ten the wood in front of the six is going to help though might be able to snap it across sent the ball over there but nothing else Brian bit into it. It's only 10 pins now. <laughs> Pulling double duty there. steps in, you know. <laughs> Norcross with a two pinner on the left hand side. He's got the four eight. Right on it. Ooh, oh wow. Ooh. Just slid by. That was about a quarter board maybe. For the ten. Right in the it. face. <laughs> So he'll maintain a 10-pin lead going in the final two frames. Boy, did he hit that ever in the face. Almost like he hit it twice. I like to say that, you know. Yeah. So nice he hit it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and it always seems to happen on the 10 box, you know. Ooh. Just off to the right. Yeah, that wasn't the time for that. Blows out three to the right. And this is one of those one in a hundred shots, really. Ooh. Tried to go outside, which is the correct play on that one. When you need it. Every pin matters. Well, at this point, yes. 
Absolutely. Yeah, he's big out here. Ooh. All right, so with the six box. Yeah, we've got a must, must mark situation. May even need a double now. That puts him at 86, so he's he's down four and a box. Give him his Look, chance. Come on. Well, he makes a spare here, drops another 9-10. Anything can happen. We've seen some stuff on this show. Right in the face. And a spare. He's doing all he can. And he's still fighting. This kid's always been full of fight. I wouldn't be surprised to see a hammer here. Oh. Ooh. That one get away. So rough string for Brian, rough showing. I know he's not happy with himself. Oh. Nikki. No across. Just needs nine pins and two frames to seal the victory. And face Jason Doucette in our Elite Eight round. And seals the deal right there. And that's that makes it official. Now it's just a matter of wrapping up this frame. I have a feeling Nick's going to be dangerous the rest of the tournament. He's gotten away with a few balls, and I'm sure he will even tell you that, and I'm sure we'll talk about it in the post game. And uh, so that's really nice to make the check mark and then drop nine right here. And if he makes that, that's really nice for your confidence to know that you've gotten, not not gotten away with anything per se, but. And another spare for Nicky. When you know you, you've got the working ball, even when you're not at the right. top of your game and you still pull out a match, that's that's really good for your confidence going forward. So yeah, absolutely. That's a big two boxes out of Nick, even though it was, you know, he had it, he had it in, in his pocket, but. Still gonna end with a good score. Let's see again. And yeah, he drops it, nine. You know, it's, that's going to be tough to beat if he can find that head pin. I know. He just finishes with a 128. 128 to 98. It ended up being a 30-pin differential. So add another 30 to the uh, to the tally, Dave, Indeed. for your pin differential stats. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll be back to talk to the bowlers just after this. Welcome back to New England Candle Pins. You just saw a good match between Nick Northcross and Brian Heffernan. Now, Brian, you were on the head for most of the match. You, it just wasn't your friend today. It was not my friend at all. Just punching right through or just leaving that cluster on the left or the right. Just couldn't, couldn't find it. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's sometimes the game. But the good news is we got a check. We got a check here for you for $75 for your efforts. Uh, congratulations, and we hope to see you back uh, during our next show. Richie? Thanks, Dave. And I'm here with uh, with your winner, Nick Norcross. Nick, uh, you really found it those last two boxes after a few wayward ones to start. Um, that must be good for your confidence going forward. Yeah, you know, I hope those last two boxes carry over to the next match. And you know, I got really lucky this match. You know, I was missing left, missing left, and a couple times I overcompensated and missed right. But you know, I'm happy everything came together the last couple boxes. So we'll see what happens. Sure. So uh, we'll see Nick Norcross in the Elite Eight. Brian, credit to him. He battled very hard. And uh, that'll do it for us at New England Candle Pins, and we'll see you next time. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.